Great to be here on this lovely morning. It is a warm morning. Wonderful to have you, Bill. Yeah. And I thought we are going to have another co-host this morning. I was getting ready to kid him, but he hasn't shown up No, yet. I just saw him walk down the hallway. He's on Jonathan Bodwell time this morning. <laughs> the, the badger. <laughs> the badger comes in. And no. I was loaded to start kidding you this morning, Mike, but I couldn't do it if you weren't here. Well, his hair isn't even dry. There's still plenty of time. <laughs> his, shirt, his clothes aren't dry. His hair's, not, his hair's not combed or anything. Are we sleeping in the parking lot? I'll tell you what. I left my phone out in my room. I, my alarm didn't go off. It, it's been a, a bad day already. <laughs> well, we're glad you could share it with us. The, you, he literally just drove in from yeah. Charleston. He, he was held over at the 60-day session. Hornby lost his key, and Height's been down there trying to jimmy the door a little bit to get him in. <laughs> Poor Hornby. <laughs> poor Mike. <laughs> poor poor height. <laughs> poor Colin. He's the one that's going to scratch all this stuff together now. I think Colin may have assumed you weren't coming in. <laughs> Already you're on uh, the chat room this morning, so you'd be fired, Mike. Oh, so you're well, late. You should be hey, fired. Anybody wants this job, he'll... Have at it. <laughs> he comes in late and then he disavows the job. <laughs> this is going to be a great two hours. <laughs> Welcome back, Mr. Come on, guys. <laughs> this is going to be just wonderful. <laughs> Let's, let's, walk, let's try to save the program and welcome in our guests on the day today, the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles. Kevin Mo, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Top of the morning, Mike. <laughs> Top of the morning oh, to geez, you, Kevin. It looks, it looks like you're having a good one. Wipe the sleep out of your eyes. <laughs> I tell you. I was, I was going to put my little leprechaun hat on today, but the luck hasn't been there. Colin's got it for you, buddy. Hey, there you go. You, hey, Colin, if you want to bring that in, bring it in, man. Let's, no, let's no, no, no. Keep it in there. <laughs> you, know? you, and your brother, you and your brother must be having some uh, phone problems because he left his phone on my truck when he was doing some work. Oh, and I drove all through town and yeah, I put, had to go put that on the table backtrack to find his phone in the middle of the road. Well, here you go. Here, here's in the, the middle of the road. Yeah. Oh my lord. You don't, yeah, you don't have to there wear it but it'd go. be nice. <laughs> yeah, hey. that's a hat. You came in decked out last St. Patrick's yes, Day. Yes he did. I was no, it was, it was two St. Patrick's oh, Day. Two? I, yeah, last year I had the hat on but I didn't wear the whole outfit. Two years ago I wore the whole outfit. That's right. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's cool. Also, Andy Blake is here, too, the city manager from Martinsburg. Andy, by comparison, you're the normal person in the room right now. <laughs> I feel like I've had a great morning. <laughs> I got great sleep. I've been at work since four. It's been great. How, how, do you, uh, how are you fixed for hats, though? Uh, I need some help. you got to get a little bit of haberdasher yeah. going on here. Well, that, anyway... Uh, welcome back, Mike. It's good to see you. Glad your attitude you, is adjusted. Thank you. It is great to be back. Everything as well. Uh, speaking of St. Patrick's oh. Day and, and such, Kevin, a couple of years ago, uh, you helped to get start a big St. Patrick's Day festival in Martinsburg. It's really taken off. Yeah, it's uh, you know last year was, of course, bigger than the year before, and this year we're looking to have a bigger event uh, than we've had uh, up to the state. This is the third annual one, and. And Robbie Blair and Main Street Martinsburg, they put together a great, great event. And, you know, people gather downtown and the, the, the vibe and the, the people that are talking that, that don't normally come to town say, boy, we've been missing this. And, you know, because now we're starting to change the things here locally that uh, people are seeing a different perception of the city of Martinsburg than it has uh, years in the past. So we're, we're real excited about it. Talk about uh, what Martinsburg might look like, say, three, four years from now when some of these projects are completed and new people have moved into the city and uh, the garage is firmly established and all the places and things that are changing. Well, you know, first of all, you know, this is the first time that Andy's uh, been on a, on a show with us and I, I can't speak highly enough about the work that Andy has done since he has taken over as city manager with uh, a lot of the different grants and projects. You wouldn't have the, the Frog Hollow Trail if it wasn't for Andy when he was our assistant city manager and, and the way he's trying to expand that. So we're going to have a more walkable area uh, to be able to market to people outside of the area. We're going to see a lot of different things happen as soon as you have interwoven, open up. Uh, there's there's going to be a possible 100 apartments being opened up to, to be rented by summertime of this summer. So we're excited about that, and that's starting to, to, to explode throughout the city. We have some projects going on to, to enhance and to help with our stormwater management in 61 acres over in that area that goes into Lake Thomas. With Lake Thomas, which should be opened up in, a, I would say, in that three-year period, I would imagine that there'd be something going on at Lake Thomas. We're going to have 
a new city hall uh, here in the summertime. So a lot of, lot, of, lot of moving parts, and if it wasn't for, you know, a great team and a great staff and a, a great uh, council that we have, that we wouldn't be able to move these things forward. And, and also great representation in the state of West Virginia. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. You don't have to suck up to him. He already said he doesn't want to be here. Sorry. Andy, what is the fiscal health of the city at this time? Well, you know, we're in the middle of our budget process. Actually, we uh, presented our recommended proposed 24-25 budget last night. We'll have a committee meeting on the 20th with hopefully approval on the 26th. You know, our finances are healthy. You know, of course, you know, we're required to have a balanced budget. We're lucky that uh, we're able to fully fund the request. There's always unfunded requests. There's always projects we want to do to try to make the community better. You know, our budget this year really focuses on people, infrastructure, and place. Um, we're proposing a $25.4 million general fund budget. We have nine different funds in the city for a combined $51.2 million. And I think that this budget, um, I think it's going to do a lot of uh, neat, creative uh, things and carry on a lot of the projects that the mayor has talked about. You know, over the last few years, uh, using ARPA funds and CARES Act funds, uh, the city was able to help uh, different organizations and do projects that have been on the books for a long time. And I think the council did a decent job. We're actually a pretty good job doing generational impact improvements that are going to last and didn't waste that once in a lifetime money. Now, I would have a different aspect on that. People say that, you know, it's a once in a lifetime shot. I actually think it's proven that if the feds would give us money like this as revenue sharing, I think that we all showed that we can do good things with that money. And I actually wish it would become more of a trend. You know, back in, before the 80s, there was federal revenue sharing. And I think that we all proved that we could handle those oh, funds. What, what is federal revenue sharing, Andy, and how did it work? Well, that was I was watching Sesame Street still at that time, so I can't <laughs> particularly uh, answer that question. Dr. Seuss. Uh, so, but, but I do know that there used to be revenue sharing that came directly to municipalities uh, prior to the Reagan administration. You know, this ARPA fund and CARE Act fund was kind of, uh, you know, federal revenue sharing right back directly to the treasury of local government. It allowed us to do things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Um, now, I will say, because that money is gone, you know, ARPA funds had to be spent within two years, CARES Act funds had restrictions on them, that we're kind of back to what is the new normal? Um, you know, our budget, I'm, I'm sure, along with the state budget, was, you know, CARES Act money is gone, ARPA funds are gone. So what is the new normal? What's the new normal baseline? What's the ongoing level? And, um, you know, this is really the first budget um, that really reflects that moving on. So you said 25.5 million was the budget? 25.4 is the general fund. 25.4. But then you mentioned nine additional or nine additional funds. What's uh, clarification? How does the general fund differ from these other nine additional funds? So the general fund does general operational expenses, uh, and then we have enterprise funds. You know, the city's first priority is and must remain efficient and effective services. That's what we do, whether it's fire, police, public works, water, uh, stormwater, sewer. So these enterprise funds are sanitation, parking, water, sewer, et cetera. And under, actually under state law, these enterprise funds are supposed to support themselves. So these are the fees that customers and businesses pay for sanitation, parking, sewer, water, and those are different funds. And of course, then there's the sales tax fund. Not all the um, sales tax fund is separate. 5.5 million of that is un encumbered into the general fund. And that goes towards OPEB liability, uh, pensions, and other liabilities. You know, one thing I'll I'll touch on a little bit. I don't want to get into the real weeds about it, but uh, the legislature last year actually gave the cities a tool for those of us who have, I would call it relic fire and police or police and fire pension systems in order to try to close out our current pension, make them better funded. And so this budget proposes that. That's a big investment on our part to, in order to try to uh, uh, reallocate our formula for our pensions for our fire and police in order to secure their pensions for the future and then try to eventually transfer into the state uh, municipal police and fire plan. You know, our current formula, again, I don't want to get into the details, so if I am, you can stop me, but our current uh, pension, you know, goes up 7% every single year. And under the bill that the legislature passed last year, which we're actually thankful for, um, it allows us to amortize our debt for 40 years and for the first few years, it's going to cost us more money. But when you look down the future, if we don't do that, then there's a wall. 
and we're going to crash. So we, we need to, basically we need to refinance our our police and fire pensions. We have the opportunity to do so, and that's our um, uh, proposal to council. There's always a temptation to compare the funds for the city and the council, and I believe the county's uh, operating funds are around 52 million, and if we add all yours up, it's around 50, 51, just slightly below 52. Uh, but yet, that's not really a true comparison. Would it be more exact to think of your general fund to be comparable with that of the county? Because the county does not fund sanitation, does not fund uh, water and the like. So yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't yeah. pave roads. So so I think the roads. so when you uh, throw a term out like fifty, your fund being for fifty three or so, fifty one with change uh, compared to the county's fifty two, that's apples and oranges. Really, it should be about twenty five versus 52 is that correct yeah like i said you know our focus is on providing services we do so those are with enterprise funds i think that's a fair comparison yes mm -hmm. mr height so i want to go back to the the um, st patrick's day festival and, and and some of the things that that happen in downtown martinsburg and how uh, tell me a little bit about the correlation between those um those fairs and festivals um, downtown and and what that does to attract people into uh, Martinsburg does that help the the businesses downtown does that help draw in new businesses downtown because there are still some empty buildings uh, particularly on Queen Street um, do you think those these types of things help in that regard do they help the current business do they help attract new business uh, yeah most definitely i mean i i could speak that as we had a business on queen street for years uh dana's tuxedo and, and uh we may not have seen a, an influx of people coming in to do business that day but we would always see people come back because they got to see what kind of vibrant downtown we have and you mentioned some areas where there's uh, some openings those are just recent openings people have moved out to move elsewhere and now there's uh plans for other places to go in i'm hearing a martini bar going in one place i'm hearing a, a, an ice cream place going another you have Drew Johnson, uh, you can see the work that he's doing, a possible restaurant that's going there. So there's always that, that attraction. There's always, uh, when people are down there moving around, people generate ideas and thoughts, and they come back to the table and say, hey, you know, we really like what you're doing down in downtown Martinsburg in the city in the city itself, and if there's any opportunities for us to, to partner up, uh, we're, we're always there to talk to them. You also mentioned Frog Hollow earlier, um, and I'd like to know, we've seen um, from, like, Route 9, um, in into Martinsburg, we've seen a lot of, uh, of, of uh, building and, and construction and, and getting that going. Um, it looks great and love it. What is the next step with the Frog Hollow? Where are we going with that, and where do we anticipate it in the future? Well, I, I think you know we're going to let Andy speak about this raise grant, what that will do with the partnership of everybody involved. And Andy wrote a wonderful grant. And, if you want the details, we have three hours. He could give it to you. <laughs> and and real quick, is this is this a partnership between Martinsburg and Parks and Rec, or is this all Martinsburg doing this? No, let's go ahead. Okay, you sure? Okay. Um, yeah, actually, you know, I'm supposed to treat every project fairly and equally, I guess, but it's kind of like your kids. I mean, this is one of my favorite sure. projects. Um, you know, the the rail was taken up a couple of years ago at the Frog Hollow Spur. We took advantage of it. Council supported it. We built the Frog Hollow Trail. But that was just the first phase of many phases. And then we went ahead and had our engineering firm start designing and engineering segments of the trail that extends from Route 9 all the way over to War Memorial Park. Um, a couple months ago, we were given an opportunity, thanks to the West Virginia Department of Transportation, to help write and fund a RAISE grant. A RAISE grant is the major federal infrastructure grant that's out right now. We applied on February 26th for a $20 million RAISE grant in partnership with the Berkeley County Commission and the Eastern Hagerstown Eastern Panhandle MPO to finish the Route 9 trail to connect to the Frog Hollow Trail, connect the Frog Hollow Trail over to Oatsdale Park using uh, the Tuscarora Creek, opening up Lake Thomas for the first time in 100 years and over to War Memorial Park. Um, we'll know by the end of the June whether we get that grant or not, um, and that's in partnership again with the Berkeley County Commission and the City of Martinsburg. And, you know, we right now maintain the Frog Hollow Trail, largely because, you know, when you ask someone, can we put a trail in your backyard, 
you know, it takes a lot of discussion. So we wanted to make sure that we were trying to maintain that adequately so we could set the standard for what the trail would be. And then in the future, there might be discussions of whether it's trail authority or whether it goes to parks or, or whatnot. But right now, you know, the goal is to try to get it constructed. And so, you know, we have support of both senators and our uh, delegation to try to get this raise grant. And we're really hoping it's successful. For years, parking has been a uh, consideration or an issue in the city. There's talk about a parking garage. Is that still in the works? There's there's always talking about parking yeah, garage. I yeah. know I know that I brought the topic up back in 2008 and then back up again in 2012. And you know the city had done a study back then that, that saw that we didn't need, have the need. But you know m me personally, you know if you bring uh, the roundhouse online. Uh, the Apollo up to speed where it's at. I was at an event at the Apollo, and there was no parking in the area. Uh, so, yeah, those are always considerations that we're looking at. So it's never a no. It's always uh, different opportunities that may come up uh, can come up in conversations, and, and I don't think it's ever off the table. I think it's but, something that, that we, are, we are looking aggressively to somewhere in, in the near future. But at this point in time, there are no firm plans. No plans, no plans at yet. this time. A lot, yeah. a lot of talk. Uh, and a lot of uh, identifying of possible areas, but nothing substantial. Is that a cost issue? Is that why? Well, there's there's several issues. Uh, first of all, I think the last time I saw a parking garage structure or a deck is about $20,000 a spot. Then there's the location. And, you know, uh, the mayor and I have had this discussion several times about this becomes more feasible, feasible if you can find a private partnership where basically you have a private public partnership that sub subsidizes a public or a parking garage. For example, you know, Embassy Suites in Charleston, they have a parking garage. So they have a hotel there and their guests pay for parking. That helps subsidizes the parking garage. If we could find something like that, then it's a, a lot better or a lot easier lift than to spend, you know, ten million dollars or more on a on a on a parking structure. There's an argument going on in Alexandria right now about the potential for the Wizards and the Capitals to move to Alexandria and out of the District of Columbia. I heard a report this morning they were talking about parking garages and hotels there. And this project is so extensive that they said a parking space <clears throat> in a garage there would cost, uh, I think they said $75 for the night. And the hotel rooms would be $731 a night. Now, obviously, that's not what we're talking about in Martinsburg, but you mentioned $20,000 a spot, Andy, and if the city's not going to take a bath on a parking garage, if you don't get that kind of subsidy, the parking garage would be so expensive, nobody would park in it. I, so you, you do need some help in this situation. I've always had this philosophy of uh, build it and they will come is not a great financial policy when it comes to certain <laughs> things. Not when it's taxpayer money. No, yeah, right. not at all. So I think that the first step would be, you know, the mayor mentioned that study. Before anything was done, I think the study needs to, would have to be revised to see what's the demand, what's the location, you know, you know, what would the pricing be? I mean, I think there's some homework. Now, do I think that we could start doing that homework? Yes. I think that as downtown becomes more um, successful, it's going to drive some demand. I will say, you know. I walk almost every day around town. Actually, probably some of your listeners see me walking around. You know, I intently look to see at the parking at the parking situation. I park a lot. Now, can I park specifically maybe right in front of that business? No. Have I had trouble finding parking? I mean, we have several municipal park. I think we have over 800 and some city parking spaces. And if you just drive around and look at the lots, they're they're not full on most days. Now, having said that. When you have St. Patrick's Day events and you have other events that are happening and you start having the garage and the interwoven and all the transformation that that's going to cause on King and Queen, that might increase the demand. Let's go back the, to the interwoven. Uh, sorry, the interwoven, but, yeah, I was staying on that. Yeah. Are they going to have their own parking spaces at interwoven or is that going to be street parking? No, they actually have their own parking spaces. That was required by the site plan. Actually, they'll have, I guess they'll officially have, what, the first parking deck first because parking, they, yeah. have, the, they have the underground parking, parking underground. in their basement. Yeah. And then so they do have street parking or, uh, around, but they do have on-site parking that was required as part of their site plan. Yeah, I want to kind of build upon that with the interval one. And, Kevin, in the past you've walked us through what was going to be in the uh, interval one. But taken from a different perspective, uh, ha what is going to be the economic impact on the city when interwoven is fully implemented. 
Well, I mean, as far as number wise, I, I couldn't I couldn't quote a number, but I, I can tell you that if you when we open up for a hundred new apartments there in this this summer, you're going to see more people in our restaurants. You're going to see more people downtown, more people in our gas station or grocery store. So. What that number is, Bill, I, I wouldn't even imagine what that number would be. Of course, this was, had been the hope going back 15 years or so when Bill Board House was being considered to be purchased by the city and to have uh, what they call uh, a night walking commutes to and from the city. And that never materialized, but it appears that Interwoven will provide you that vehicle you're looking for. Well, definitely, and, and keep in mind that on, on that site, too, there's going to be 10,000 square feet of retail space mm -hmm. and also a proposed restaurant. I think they've already put in some paperwork already to propose a restaurant that's going to be going there up in the front area. And if you haven't been by that area in a while, drive by. Look at the new sidewalks, the landscaping they're doing. They're doing a great job over there. Yeah, Andy mentioned public-private uh, uh, partnership earlier. Does the city have any financial investment in the interwoven? Uh, yes, we do. I, uh, we're, we're working on a project due, due to the fact that we were um, – fees and and, uh, and taxes that we were able to give back to be part of the stormwater project that legislature has been uh, good to get the, the state to be involved. It's like a $6 million pro uh, project that we have $2 million invested. Are you being facetious now or serious? I couldn't tell. Well, you said the state was kind enough to get us involved. <laughs> Actually, no. I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm totally serious. If it okay. was not for our, our local representatives and, and if it was not for the county was if it wasn't for everybody working together we wouldn't be able to have this partnership so the the, the relationships between all three governments are, are growing very very smoothly and it's something that's you know we work we all work very hard on mike is a is a very dear friend of mine and you know we, he and i go back and forth and talk about things but you know we get things done and that's that's the whole that's the whole thing is to be able to get things done to to improve our community so when it comes down to stuff like that it's a it, it falls on a kind ear so that we're all working together and and it's a total six million dollar project with a three-way split between uh, the interwoven uh, monument two million us two million and uh, the state two million hey before we run out of time kevin the uh, home show uh, was moved into april this year april six seven weekend the roundhouse sits in the city when will we see some serious movement and money in terms of bringing the roundhouse up to its potential? Well, the money has has been uh, during the ARPA and, and and the funds that we talked about earlier. They've they've received several thousand, I, I would say over a million or so dollars. They're moving forward with a lot of the progress down at the roundhouse, and they're actually having more events as we speak. Being the, the home show is the biggest one. You're bringing 5, 000, over 5,000 people down there in a weekend. And what we need, what needs to be done is that needs to be done 26 weekends out of the year. Uh, you know, these li the little shows that they have are just stuff to, to carry things on. But you're going to see that grow over the next couple. I, I see in five years that thing is going to be a, a huge uh, a not asset and not, not more of a, a problem in, uh, in, the, in the middle of the city. So in regards to the, the city... The county, and then there's the roundhouse. What's it called? Authority. Authority. Yes. Okay. Is there cooperation in in those three entities yes, that make uh, that are making this progress the, happen? The, there's there's more cooperation these days than I've ever seen. Uh, so yes, I, I'm I'm very happy with how uh, the three entities are working together to be able to move things forward. And you know, whenever there's a struggle, we 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 talk to each other on a regular basis. I sit on a foundation board. I believe Mike sits on. Part of that board also so we're we're all in it one way or the other and, and we're we're there for the same reasons to get this thing up and running and, and make it beneficial not only for for the city of Marsburg but for the county berkeley county and the state of west virginia do there need to be some road and infrastructure improvements around the roundhouse to make what you want to see happen 26 well, weekends we, a year we've happen? already done that and we had our we we just had that at our council meeting we changed the one we changed the direction of the road that comes out on top of queen street that used to be a one-way out uh, so now for us to, for people to find the roundhouse easier it's a one way in so you can get in it's very easy to get into the roundhouse these days and you know i say we want to get them in there i don't care how you get out of there but uh, we want to get you there to, to the first so that has been changed we had our first and second reading it's going to be called roundhouse way 
Uh, so that's uh, one of the changes that are moving in a positive direction to identify the the area now. There. Plus, we we were able the city was able to uh, have uh, some buildings uh, taken down that, that were weren't being taken care of there. And I think we took I think believe Andy three buildings down there that that cleans up that whole area. We put a nice um, turnaround down there. So there's very nice uh, streetscape and everything going into that as Rob, we speak of today. Uh, one quick follow on if I can. Uh, Senator Manchin, Senator Capito recently got a, a quarter, three quarters of a million dollars for the roundhouse. What will those funds be used for? I couldn't speak for how they put put the money in for. I can't speak for the uh, for the monies that the Manchin and the Capitol they 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 allocated uh, 1.8 million for us to get our fire truck. So we're very grateful for that. Anything the two of you didn't cover that we need to make sure people hear about? We can wait for the next segment next time. <laughs> That well, detail, ne huh? yeah, well, well, next time, you know, we, the budget will be, uh, at that time, will be passed, and we'll have more clear-cut um, things to tell you about the budget and a lot more good things happening here in Martinsburg. You know, I can tell people, keep your eyes and ears open. Martinsburg's moving forward real quick, real fast, so get on board. Well, go ahead and plug the St. Patty's Day Parade uh, uh, sorry, Chase, Festival. Uh, we'd, be, we'd be celebrating St. Patty's Day <laughs> this weekend in downtown Martinsburg. We'd be starting around 11 o'clock in the morning and going to 7 in the evening. We're expecting a wonderful, wonderful day weather-wise. So bring it all down, you lovely wives and kids. <laughs> you lovely wives and kids? Wives and kids. <laughs> you got an Irish word for kids you want to throw in there anywhere? Or is that about it? Uh, it's Gaelic. It doesn't sound too good, though. <laughs> Andy, thanks for coming in. Thanks. Mr. Knowles. Thank you. Have a wonderful uh, day, weekend, and festival. Yeah, thank you for the music on the way out. I like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There you are. I'll put, turn it up a little bit for you, too.